This week on The Wire, positive property shock predicted, APRA moved to lift lending, and NAB tips RBA to cut twice. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest, uh, Australia's leading financial educator and managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals, whether they be home ownership, travel and lifestyle, or early retirement, using only what they currently have available to them right now. Welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate, where we cover off all the top stories happening from the week in real estate, finance, uh, um, uh, property, those kinds of things, guys. So um, welcome to the live broadcast. Um, now, of course, if you're a first time uh, tuning in, uh, make sure you click subscribe or follow so that you see all our videos coming forward. If you're a long time follower, welcome back. We'd love to see you guys. Uh, you know, of course, we'd love to see your interaction with things like like, love, angry. Uh, if you've got a question for our Just Ask Tim video series, make sure you pop it in the comment box below and I could be answering your question live through one of our broadcasts. If not, one of our team will definitely get back to you. But guys, that's about it. So let's get into the top stories. A big week, big week in real estate over the last uh, seven days. Some major, major developments. So let me run through the uh, the top three major changes. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the broadcast. Um, so like I said, positive property shock predicted. So expect a rebound in Australia's property markets. That's the view from economists in the industry uh, following Labor's failure to win an election and implement changes with regards to negative gearing. So as an example, Goldman Sachs economists are forecasting a moderate positive shock uh, to sentiment in the corporate sector and a more meaningful one in the housing sector. Uh, the housing markets in Sydney and Melbourne are expected to bottom, bottom out earlier than what was originally expected and it's providing a, uh, a good boost to particularly the Brisbane and Perth markets as well. Um, uh, Core Logics, uh, Tim Lawless says the election outcome is an overall net positive as well for housing. Certainty has been reintroduced, which will bring confidence and allow uh, people to make high commitment decisions. That's what Tim Lawless, who's the uh, CEO of uh, Core Logic, um, UBS economist George uh, Tharano says the coalition's election win is likely to stabilise sentiment and reduce the risk in the housing market. And this can lift consumer sentiment overall, uh, essentially uh, as we've got you know strong household wealth there, um, and uh, reduce the risks in the housing market. Uh, this could lift the household consumption as well, which has been threatening to spill over into a weak, into weakening economic growth. So property leaders have flagged restored confidence. You know, that comes from Ray White, Chairman Brian White, has also called the bottom of the market in the wake of the coalition's election victory as well. Um, Tyron Hyde, the Director of Depreciation Experts at Washington Brown, he says he expects to see a flurry of activity from people getting into the market in the coming months. Um, now that that uh, negative gearing is abolished, he says the defeat of Labor and its policies will mean the current negative gearing provisions will remain in place for a long time. Two, uh, two elections that uh, Bill Shorten went to with changes to negative gearing lost both elections. I think that'll really take that off the table for a long time now. He even, uh, getting back to Tyron Hyde, actually thinks that uh, he won't see those kind of changes proposed again in his lifetime. Uh, on top of that, mortgage broker Louise Lucas, and that's at the property education company, says it's now full steam ahead for property investors who are worried about the prospect of a Labor victory and changes to negative gearing. So a um, huge shift in sentiment um, uh, in the market. Like I said, probably the way that we're going to see this play out, uh, I think Melbourne pretty much will have bottomed already or pretty or almost instantly from the, uh, this news. Sydney might still have a little bit of time to go, uh, but very, very close to the bottom now. Uh, Perth, we're very clear, is in a recovery now. Uh, looking at stats uh, from 12 months ago, 40% uh, of the suburbs in Perth are now worth more than they were 12 months ago, so it's great news there. And, and Brisbane um, has kind of been in its recovery, but really struggling to kind of um, uptick uh, and of course, a lot of it had to do with obviously the APRA restrictions um, and also uh, negative gearing capital gains tax policies that Labor cleared the decks. Uh, get ready because it's going to be uh, an exciting time in property right now. Moving on, and, and another uh, major shift that uh, announced and I did the video on Tuesday is APRA uh, move to lift lending. So APRA has begun moves to ease the restrictions on how lenders assess mortgage applications uh, with likely positive consequences for residential real estate. Essentially, under the current Australian Prudential Regulatory uh, Authority, uh, under their current rules, lenders have to assess a borrower's ability to service loans assuming an interest rate of above 7%. So most lenders often do 7.25, if not 7.5. Um, the reality is, is that most people can borrow at around about four or under. So significant difference there and it's been heavily criticised. Um, now APRA says it will remove its guidance um, and instead lenders will be permitted to set their own minimum interest rate floor for use in serviceability, 
but it is proposed that it use a buffer of the, uh, of the interest rate that the person is applying for of 2.5%. Mortgage broker Louise Lucas um, says the changes will mean borrowers are assessed on interest rate levels close to the ones they're actually paying. Riskwise Property Research says APRA's uh, scrapping of the 7% stress test buffer will effectively see a 9% increase in borrowing capacities for owner-occupiers, which will rise to between 13 and 14% if the, under, if the RBA, uh, RBA undertakes two interest rate cuts before the year is out, which is something that's been quite heavily predicted now. So major change when it comes to lending there. Uh, it's going to have significant... Um, impact on people's ability to borrow money. So once again, more great news. And then coming out of the RBA this week as well, so a big week, like I said, you know, APRA, the election, and now the RBA. Uh, the Reserve Bank of Australia appears poised to slice official interest rates, and that's with Governor uh, Philip Lowe this week saying it could be on the bank's agenda next month. Now, in a speech to Queen, the Queensland branch of the Economic Society of Australia in Brisbane, Lowe said without a cut in interest rates, it was unlikely the bank's forecast for lower unemployment and a lift in inflation would be met. Uh, declaring that Australia could do better uh, than have an unemployment rate at around 5%. He said there were few options for the RBA but to consider a rate cut. Uh, NAB has brought forward its forecast for a cash rate cut and now expects the Reserve Bank to act both in June, which is next month, uh, particularly after um, the, the Governor's uh, comments this week. It, it seems like the uh, rate cut is on the cards for next month. Uh, and they're predicting another rate cut in August as well. That's NAB. Uh, with a third... Uh, 25% per, uh, basis point movement to blue 1% possible in early 2020. I think that's a bit uh, bit uh, optimistic, but um, but fine. Uh, the nation's fourth, fourth biggest lender says an un, unexpected uptick in the jobless rate provided further evidence that the economy economy has softened more than the RBA expected, uh, hence why they're looking at the rate cut. And the nation's, uh, and coupled with weak inflation for the March quarter, as well as subdued businesses and consumer sentiment, NAB, says April's job figures would force the central bank to take action at its June 4 board meeting and again in August. So that's June 4, that's Tuesday, first Tuesday in June. Uh, expect the news to see a rate cut. But guys, that covers off the uh, the three biggest stories coming from uh, uh, real estate this week. Um, like I said, guys, if you're first time uh, uh, tuning in, uh, make sure you subscribe or follow, depending on what platform you're watching this on. Uh, of course, we'd love to see all your comments and questions. Like, love, angry. Let us know what you think about the news this week and uh, maybe how it impacts you and you know what your sense of the markets are. Uh, and of course, please share uh, share these posts with your friends and family so they get the, value, the benefit of this valuable information. Apart from that, guys, I'll uh, be checking in early next week with the Just Ask Tim video series. So if you've got any questions, please send them through. And uh, have a great weekend. I look forward to speaking to you then. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.